Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Beatdown Bandits podcast. I am Colin, and in uh, today's episode, we're going to discuss um, sort of Apex Season 9, but also with a new season. Uh, a new season brings on a lot of new people to to the game or to any game any any new season brings on a lot of a lot of uh new players there's also uh switch has been released uh apex mobile is coming out um and yeah like i said just a new season um especially with the hype around a new season brings in a lot of new people right so i wanted to take a second to speak to anybody new coming into the game who just has no familiar familiarity that's a weird word anyway uh who does not quite know what what's going on in apex and kind of speak to them about the legends you know overall it's just a pretty simple battle royale um but the difference between apex and other battle royales is the the legends have abilities um and the the movement is unlike anything you've ever played or seen before um that to me is what separates apex from other games is it's all first person but uh, the movement is just ridiculously insane uh it's 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 amazing and you'll you'll pick that up and you'll notice that right away like this game just runs so fast um so yeah that that's one of my favorite parts of the game but again i wanted to kind of introduce everybody to the legends a little bit um so really i just have like a real quick document here that i'm going to share with everyone um, so if you're watching along on YouTube, this would this would be the easiest for you. If you're listening on uh, on uh, uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts, that's that's great. Um, you're not missing much with the visuals, so don't worry. I'm just reading a list basically. Um, so I'm just gonna say everything I have here anyway. So you start the game with with six legends. Okay, Pathfinder, Gibraltar, Wraith, Lifeline, Bloodhound, and Bangalore. Those are all unlocked for you. And then there's a list of other legends that we'll, we'll talk about. So I have these legends listed in order from the highest skill gap to the lowest skill gap. That doesn't mean somebody can't come in, pick up the highest skill gap player and just play with them right off of the bat. That doesn't mean that at all. You can easily pick up one of those people, go in and win a game right off of the bat. It, it's that simple. Um, especially if you're gun skilled, you don't really have to even use the abilities. They just help a lot. Um, so the movement, you know, definitely can give you advantage. And if you have that gun skill, again, you already have that advantage. So let's, let's talk about these legends. And again, it's highest skill gap to the lowest skill gap. So we're going to start with the, the six that you have to start with. And these all can be kind of moved around. It's just my own personal beliefs. So if you feel otherwise, that's perfect. You can comment. Just let me know what, what your thoughts are. Um, but it's really just my own personal uh, my own personal beliefs with this. So Pathfinder, again, he's a very common legend for people to just start off with right off the bat from day one. Because a lot of people like that robot character. Uh, and he's also likable. He has a fun personality. And if you've ever seen trailers, he, he's kind of that guy of like, this guy's so funny. So yes, uh, Pathfinder is, is, can be very easily be picked up. Um, I just noticed with like the grapple ability, which is his, his kind of moment to shine is his ability to grapple and fling himself all over the place. Uh, that takes a lot of skill, a lot of timing, a lot of effort and a lot of practice. Um, so with the other ones, I feel like for Pathfinder to be a beginner Pathfinder to like what the pros look like with Pathfinder, it's like night and day. So I think there's the highest skill gap, but again, you can come in and you can grapple with him easily, pull yourself up, fling yourself around. You can do it. The pros just look so much better doing it. So there's a high skill gap there. Um, but I just recommend maybe spending some time with him in the firing range and you'll really get used to him. All right, next up is Gibraltar. Um, so Gibraltar, um, I, I feel like Gibraltar doesn't necessarily have like a giant skill gap, but he is very high in the meta, very high in pro play. Um, he, he started off as like by far the worst legend in the game um, back in like season zero through season two, like worst legend. And then he started getting these little buffs and then he got more buffs and more buffs. And now he was at one point, like back in like season six or so, he was easily the best legend in the game because he had so many abilities. Um, now he's slightly getting like some nerfs, 
Um, but uh, for a Gibraltar to be extremely useful, he helps to being uh, it helps to be communicative with your team, as you'll find like some of these are like it's important to be able to communicate with your team. Uh, he's not just a ping based legend. Um, so if you're communicating with your team, uh, Gibraltar is a really good pickup because he can help rotate, he can help heal, um, and he can really just help defend your team. You know, that's what he's best known for. Uh, next up on the list is Wraith. Uh, Wraith is one of the top like three legend picks of, of all the legends um she's she's uh like a 99 percent pick rate in uh, in pro leagues um she's starting to fizzle out a little bit but um i don't think she's really gonna go anywhere um she's still like the number one pick uh in pro leagues uh so wraith just helps transport your team basically from one spot to another um with basically invincibility uh is kind of the way that that, that she's used um, she's been nerfed a little bit, but not, not too much. Um, but with her abilities, I feel like you kind of have to be a frontline player, um, because she's got that quick escape ability, which a lot of people like, and a lot of new people are attracted to is like, oh, well, if I can go invincible for, for five, six seconds, like, well, then that's useful to me. And it, it really is, it is useful to new players. Um, but there is a skill gap, but she's got to be up there up front. So I would recommend a few other people prior to per playing wraith but um you know again that's just me she's a lot of people get drawn to her right off of the bat um because she kind of looks like she would be a, a a top pick and people probably recognize her um if they've watched videos before because like i said she's a very common pick uh next up and, and really these next three lifeline bloodhound bangalore can be swapped either way um in my opinion uh but but lifelines getting some changes where I think it, I I almost had her at number one, um, but I think now with these the season with season nine she's getting a little bit of a nerf, um, so let's talk about that real fast. Is her passive ability these last couple seasons has been insane? Is by far the most overpowered passive ability in the game. Um, she's basically the team medic. Uh, if you're not familiar with her, I mean with the name Lifeline you'd probably guess, um, but she is the team medic. Again, very likable personality, so I think a lot of people want to pick her anyway. Uh, but she can easily walk over a down teammate, spam the revive button, and continue to walk away and shoot while that person is being revived. She has a drone that can revive her downed teammates, and then she has a healing drone as well, uh, which she can drop and heal her teammates. Um, so if you play Lifeline, again, she's a good pickup for a beginner. Um, just make sure you're using that drone. Um, I, I play with so many like random lifelines, probably 50% of the random lifelines I play with never heal, like never heal me. They have, sometimes don't even heal themselves. It's like, why are you popping constant med kits and syringes if you have that doc drone? So just remember you have abilities, especially if we're playing lifeline, use that and use that to your ability. Like, you know, dropping that, that drone for your teammates helps you. You know, the more healthy your teammates are, the better off you're going to be. <clears throat> All right, next up is Bloodhound. Um, Bloodhound is kind of like the hunter tracker uh, legend. Um, they they have basically the best way to put it, like their tactical ability, which is kind of their main ability, is the ability to see through walls and, and find where enemies are. So they can pop that ability. It's just a sonar type of cone-shaped scan. Uh, at the beginning, it basically just kind of went like 10 feet in front of them and Bloodhound was like total garbage. Like I hated it. It was just so useless. Now Bloodhound scan is massive. It's like scanning multiple buildings. Um, so it's very useful to find out where all the enemy teams are around you. Just, you just have to know it's a cone. So you may have to rotate like, oh, I think there's a team over here. Let me scan and find out. Um, so you can see through walls and you'll see the outlines of the enemies, whether they're moving, if they're healing, whatever. And that's a massive ability and, uh, and, and extremely important. So it doesn't take a whole lot of skill to use. You just need to make sure you're facing and scanning the right way. Um, Bloodhound's ultimate ability, um, as long as it's used aggressively, I think is super useful. A lot of people pop it and it's just like escape with it. It's like you're, you're kind of missing the point of that. So just know when you use Bloodhound's ultimate, everything goes gray, the enemies show up red, that's a good time for you to attack. So if you hear that or you pop it, know it's time to attack. Uh, and then number one on my list um, for just like the lowest skill gap is Bangalore. 
I don't want to take anything away from Bangalore because Bangalore is an extremely powerful legend. She's starting to trickle in a little bit, even to like the, in the pro leagues into like the ALGS. If you guys haven't watched that, um, the um, apex legends global series. Um, sure. You can probably just get on YouTube and watch a bunch of those, but uh, Bangalore is starting to trickle in there with about two different people. Um, one person has been kind of playing Bangalore since day one. I'm not going to give anybody shout outs or anything, but uh, one of the best players in the world still plays Bangalore. Um, but to me, there's like the, a very low skill gap. Um, so a new player who's just maybe just extremely aggressive and knows how, knows how the guns work um, can easily use this legend because their abilities allow them to be super hyper aggressive with, with some escape ability and the ability to help your teammates with, with smoking your, your enemies or your teammates. Um, uh, her bombardment uh, is also extremely useful and it all just goes in front of her so she can drop her, uh, her bombardments like a little uh, flare. She can throw that down and it all goes that way. Um, so it's great to also protect your team from, uh, from enemies. It's a little different than Gibraltar. So get in the firing range and, and use both of those Gibraltars and Bangalore's ultimate abilities, and you can you can kind of see the difference. Um, all right, so going forward, uh, going forward, there are unlockable legends um, with um, that don't take a lot of coins. So you can you can start unlocking legends pretty quick in the game. Just start playing, and and you'll be able to unlock them. So again, this is highest skill gap to least skill gap. Okay, that doesn't make any legend better or worse. Um, so I'm not saying this legend is better than this legend. Uh, this is not in any type of order of best legend to worst. It's skill gap levels. So basically the, the easiest for, for new players to come in and play. Um, so uh, the, the number or the top one on my list, so the highest skill gap, which to me probably has the highest skill gap around of, of all the legends is, is Crypto. Uh, crypto is extremely useful. He's, he's very, um, I, I, if you, if you jump into like a pubs match and you're, you're playing with a crypto, uh, just know that crypto most likely is going to fall behind and will spend a lot of time in their drone rather than actually helping you fight. Um, that's not all cryptos, but it's a very common thing for cryptos to do. A lot of people want to play cryptos like, Oh, I can fly a drone around and scout ahead. It's like, well, yeah, like while you're in your drone, we're over here fighting two V three and you're just flying around in circles. So that's the, the, the devastating aspect of crypto, but the elite cryptos are extremely powerful. They know how to use their EMP. Um, they're scanning beacons. Um, they, they're scanning the enemies and they can get in and out of their drone extremely fast. Um, so it is a very high skill gap. Crypto takes probably the most practice of any legend here. So I, if you're a very high skill player and you feel like you can pick that up real quick, I would recommend him because he is super powerful and he has a lot of skill and abilities to bring to the game. Um, but your teammates may get upset with you from time to time. Uh, next on my list is Watson. Uh, Watson was one of my favorite characters. She is, uh, to me, she's a very lovely person. She's great, great personality. I really enjoy her. Um, and the, the problem is, is she's not extremely powerful anymore. She's power wise. She's, she's towards the bottom three on this list. Unfortunately, like they don't give her good enough buffs. Um, she just got a buff in season eight and it's just, it's tiny and it's not, it's not good enough. Um, but she has a high win rate. Um, so if you're playing with a Watson, let that Watson guide you um, if they know what they're doing. Um, Cause that Watson, unfortunately, like if you're playing with randoms, people don't know how to play with a Watson and uh, they just want to go, Oh, we're going to go hunt over here, shoot over here. Typically Watsons are like, let's defend this area and we'll shoot from this spot. Um, but people don't want to do that. And uh, they don't communicate with, with Watson, or they don't, don't communicate with randoms in general. So um, there is a high skill gap level there. Um, her kit isn't super hard to use. Um, they're, they're pretty easy to understand. Um, there are people who place her electrical fences a lot better than others. Some people just use the basic stuff. Um, but if you get really used to her, uh, her fences can be a lot, a lot more powerful than you think. Um, but a lot of people try to walk through them thinking, oh, like this is no big deal. I'll go hunt them. And it's extremely deadly because they're they're getting shocked. So try her out. Um, but no, there there is a skill gap between communication wise, pretty much there. 
Uh, next on my list is Revenant. Uh, Revenant is pretty much like the ultimate uh, communication legend. Um, he is extremely powerful and extremely obnoxious to run up against. Um, he actually, he honestly doesn't take that much skill. He can very easily be a lot lower on this list of low skill gap. Um, but for him to be his most useful is a high skill gap because you have to be communicating with your teammates and they have to know what you're doing, where you're placing things, etc. cetera. Um, so Revenant's got this totem that he can put down that turns all of the legends into little zombies basically. And they can go, uh, go and if they go if they die then they get sent back to the totem they're half health basically so uh it can be extremely useful um to go and basically do a double tack on a, on a team um to kind of come back and already be mostly healed so but again he takes a lot of communication with the teammates um he's not overly powerful his his passive ability of, of climbing a little bit extra high higher and uh, like a silent crouch walk um not as useful as one might think um i think if those were upped or increased a little bit he would be a little bit better of a legend but he's a, he's a pretty low pick right now anyway uh next on my list is horizon and horizon is by far one of the best legends currently i think there's another nerf for her coming soon but um horizon i think like right now has like the highest win rate um so uh there's not a giant skill gap because her her abilities are easy to understand um, I just feel like she's more of an upfront player. So if you're super aggressive at the beginning, Horizon would be a fine pick as well. She's got basically the height advantage legend is basically what she has. Is she can easily drop down her tactical ability, which is like a gravity lift, launches her up into the sky, and uh, she, can, she can shoot down on her enemies. She can also get up on top of a building, on top of any object, and be able to shoot down on, on somebody. So... For people who understand that height is an advantage, which I try to tell people all the time and nobody ever listens, is don't give up that high ground. Horizon is a great pick if you understand that ability. So Horizon is very strong with that. Um, her ultimate is kind of lackluster, but if you have nades to go with it, it's, it's great. Um, it's basically just a black hole, sucks everybody in, chuck a bunch of nades into it, and it's, it's super useful. Uh, next on my list is Caustic. Now, now Caustic would be a little, I guess, lower on my list, would be a lower skill gap, but he's been nerfed a little bit, so his gas isn't quite as powerful as what it once was. Um, but, uh, I mean, a lot of people just end up like kind of being a little too campy with Caustic, just basically locking themselves into a room and, and throwing those gas traps on the door and saying, okay, I'm safe here. Um, but people aren't as scared of caustic as they used to be. So I think if you're going to be a caustic, you have to be able to fight and you probably have to be able to fight 1v3 because your teammates aren't going to want to do that a lot. So if you can fight 1v2s, 1v3s, caustic will be a lot more useful to you. But again, people aren't as scared of the gas as they used to be. So just be aware of that. Uh, next on my list is Loba. Um, so Loba doesn't take a whole lot of skill um just just uh one her her tactical ability she throws her bracelet and transports to it that takes a little bit of skill to know uh where i'm throwing my bracelet you don't want to necessarily throw it right in between teammates i've done that plenty of times where i've thrown it and then are not on teammates in front of enemies I throw it in front of enemies and guess what they hear it they see it and now i'm dead instantly before i can even pull my gun out so um there is that skill level with loba that you almost have to use it as an escape ability, getting away from enemies rather than coming in and trying to get into the fight. Um, her ultimate ability is her tactical, or excuse me, is her, uh, uh, I'm, I'm blanking on what it's called, her her shop, her, her uh, bo boutique. There we go. That's the word I was looking for, is, uh, is her boutique. Know that Loba is a loot legend. Um, so she needs to drop that down as quickly as possible after fights, uh, early in the game, etc. Um, the problem with Lobas is that not only does Loba end up becoming a, a little bit of a loot goblin and slowing things down, she ends up turning her teammates into that as well. So sometimes there's a little uh, disconnect or whatever between that. And I think sometimes Lobas hurt their teammates. Um, but if there's communication and there's a high, you know, there's a high skill level between teammates, then, uh, then Loba is probably a pretty useful pick. Uh, next up, Mirage. Again, Mirage is a, a very common pick for for uh, for beginning players. 
He's, uh, he's not very difficult to understand. Uh, know that you may have to revive a little bit more often than Lifeline, especially going forward, uh, because Mirage is, it turns invisible. And I am extremely gutsy with it. Anybody that's ever played with me when I'm playing Mirage knows I will revive right in front of anybody um, because I can often pull it off. Um, it's really easy to do. Uh, the sounds get thrown off. And like I said, when he turns invisible, it's extremely useful. So if your teammates get down and you're playing as Mirage, take uh, <laughs> take a chance and go revive your teammate. Like it's it's a lot of fun if you pull those off. And I'll I'll take any chance to do it. It's it's super fun. Um, but his abilities, his decoys, and his ultimate uh, his decoy bamboozle is is super fun to use. Not a huge skill gap. Now the the lower Mirages, the ones that aren't super good to the super high skilled ones, there's a little bit of a skill gap with how they use their decoys. Um, but overall, he's, he's super easy to pick up. Any of these top top four right here, anybody can pick up really. They're, it's kind of like the top three in the, the previous list. Any of these bottom four, anybody can pick up and, and pretty much run with right away. Uh, next up on my list is Rampart. So Rampart um, is, is a little like Caustic, is a little campy. Um, the problem with Rampart, just throwing this out there to people is when she puts down herself, she's basically fortifying the area that she's in and she's going to just basically be stuck there. So if you put your turret down, she's kind of just stuck at this little direction of what she's facing. So you almost have to either know a team is coming behind you and fortify yourself up, put up some of your walls and then put your turret down and be ready to go. Um, but if somebody comes from behind, you're extremely sus uh, susceptible to being attacked from behind. So, um, so just be aware of that. Um, but overall, she doesn't take a whole lot of skill, um, to use, uh, it's helpful to communicate with your teammates. Um, but just know you, you set yourself up for failure if you don't wall, wall up right with her, with her walls. Um, and when you put your, your turret down, uh, you better hope that's the way the enemies are coming. So that's really the only downside with Rampart. Um, but she's not extremely useful. Her abilities don't help that dramatic. So she's got a low pick rate, a low win rate. Um, so she's not super useful. Um, and speaking of low win rates, next up is Fuse, which I believe has the lowest. Uh, I think he's, so he's, you're going to get killed a lot. He's a very likable person, a great personality. Um, when he came in, I thought like, oh, this guy is going to be super good. Um, because grenades and throwables and arc stars and, and thermites are extremely powerful in, uh, in Apex. And his ability basically allows him to carry double what anybody else can. So, uh, so that was a little scary, but his ultimate ability and his tactical abilities are a little underwhelming. They're not extremely dangerous or powerful. So if those get buffed down the road, I think he'll, he'll be a little bit stronger of a legend. But again, this isn't a, a strongest, a weakest uh, legend list. It's the easiest to pick up and he's extremely easy to use. Uh, it doesn't take that much work. The only thing I would recommend with Fuse is uh, watching where you're using your ultimate ability. If you're indoors, it's so easy to kill yourself. I've been there, I've done that, um, but it's, uh, it's extremely, <laughs> extremely crazy indoors uh, if you use his ultimate in there. So um, just be aware of that. Um, but otherwise, his tactical and his, uh, his passive abilities are, are super easy to use. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then last up is Octane, who is one of the highest picked top, three i think he might be second to be honest um his his win rate is is increasing i believe um but i think the problem with octane is a lot of people kind of go solo with octane so sometimes his his win rate may not be awesome um but it's uh it's probably up there uh quite a bit um but his pick rates top three for sure again octane extremely useful he's also so fun to use um, I, I used to despise him because I didn't play with him a whole lot. And every time I'd get an octane random teammate, they would just go off and do their own thing. They'd get down and, and leave the game or get upset that we weren't with them, but they're sitting there stimming running like crazy. And on the other side of the map and they get mad at us. So not as common anymore. Octane's become a little bit more team friendly, um, because his jump pads are so useful and fun. Um, so yeah, o Octane again, does not take a whole lot of skill. Uh, he's very easy to pick up and understand. He naturally heals as well. 
Um, so that's very helpful. His stem, he basically just stabs himself and uh, it gives him the ability to run a little bit faster. It takes away a little bit of health, but like he said, he, his auto G uh, regen of health is, is extremely useful with that. Now that's going to get nerfed a little bit in this next season. Um, so just be aware of that. And then obviously the jump pad is extremely useful and, and easy to use. Um, so that's why I feel like Bangalore and Octane are probably the easiest ones to like legit start with. Um, with like Bloodhounds, Lifelines, Mirages, I mean, those, those are all very easy ones to start with. So that's what I would recommend to people uh, is start with those legends um, and then like uh, an unlockable order. Um, I would maybe start with like an Octane, um, maybe like Mirage. Um, if you're not super comfortable or don't, you know, are, are very nervous when you play, try Caustic a little bit. At least he can protect your back with some gas barrels and stuff um but uh yeah otherwise like th they're all they're all great you don't necessarily have to use their abilities they all have um they'll have different things that they can bring to their table so as long as you have good gunplay you'll be fine the abilities just add a little bit of extra stuff to that so um again so that that's my list um so that is it for me um you know, feel free, if you're a new player, feel free to comment and, and let me know. Or if you're a returning player or you're an experienced player, um, if you disagree with the list, that's cool. It's just, it's all opinion based. It's, it's not a problem, but feel free to comment and give any other advice to new players as well. I was going to add guns to this list and maybe I'll, I'll do that for next week. Um, maybe I'll do a gun list of, uh, for new players or gun guns going into season nine. Um, and, uh, we'll kind of roll with that. So all right. Well, that is it for me. Again, thank you very much for, for watching or listening to, uh, to this podcast. And uh, we will uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Later.